Hey, it's John. Welcome back to my channel. And today I've got a video for you about the City Links Gold Line Phase 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. This project is expanding on the City Links Gold Streetcar Line that opened in July of 2015 as a 1.5 mile or 2.4 kilometer long demonstrator line. Phase 2 is adding 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers of track to the line to allow the Gold Line to run east west through downtown, or as it's known in Charlotte, uptown. Construction on the line is complete, and pre-revenue testing is currently being carried out ahead of the line's opening in August 2021. A further extension on both ends of the line is expected to be completed as part of a currently unfunded Phase 3. This would bring the Gold Line to a total length of 10 miles, or 16 kilometers long, however there is no current schedule for completing these extensions. I'm going to make a video in the future showing the alignment of the Phase 3 extension, so make sure you subscribe to see that. Now without getting too bogged down in the seemingly endless hair splitting debate over light rail categorization, the Gold Line is a modern streetcar line. This means that the Gold Line is operationally distinct from the other light rail line in Charlotte, which is the Blue Line. The Gold Line will use six Siemens S700 low floor light rail vehicles that are equipped with batteries to operate on a short section of the line through Uptown that does not have wires. The six new S700 cars that will be used on the Gold Line are approximately 85 feet or 26 meters long, making them slightly shorter than the 96 foot or 29 meter long cars used on the Blue Line. While operationally separate, the Gold and Blue Lines are physically connected by a transfer track which allows the Gold Line cars to operate over the Blue Line tracks to reach the system's two maintenance facilities. These six new S700 cars replace the three vintage style streetcars that originally operated the Gold Line. These streetcars are currently in storage at the main maintenance facility as they are unable to serve the newly raised platforms on the Gold Line's original 1.5 mile alignment. In addition to the blue and gold lines, a third line known as the silver line is currently going through the final planning phases. The silver line is slated to eventually be 29 miles or 47 kilometers in length and have 29 stations. The line will link the towns of Belmont in the west and Indian Trail in the southeast via Uptown Charlotte and the Douglas International Airport. The Silver Line is still several years from beginning construction however as it is tentatively planned to open in 2037. I'll of course do a video on this line in the future. But for now, let's get into the tour of the City Links Gold Line Phase 2. We'll start on the east end of the line, just northeast of the future Sunnyside Station. You can see how the tracks abruptly end here on Hawthorne Lane. This is where Phase 3 will begin, which will add tracks to both ends of the existing line. On the left is a pocket track that will allow the cars to swap ends for the westbound return trip towards Uptown. Just past Sunnyside Avenue is the first station known as Sunnyside. Immediately south of the station is the bridge over US Highway 74. Construction of the Gold Line required replacement of this bridge, which was one of the reasons why the project has been delayed. Apparently the contractor ordered incorrect bridge girders, but as we can see the bridge is now finally complete. The future Silver Line will travel in the median of US 74, although there will not be an interchange station at this location. As the Gold Line will have 17 stations in just 4 miles or 6.5 kilometers, the stations are spaced fairly close to each other. And here we are already at the second station, which is Hawthorne and 8th. When the Gold Line opened in 2015, it was free to all passengers. This will change with the opening of Phase 2. A public meeting will be held August 25th to gather input on the proposed fare increase, or in this case, implementation, so it can be inferred that when the line reopens to passengers, it will initially be free to ride. The next station at Hawthorne and 5th is the former terminus of Phase 1. Notice how the new higher platform abruptly ends where the old platform was. This is how the majority of stations in Phase 1 were modified to allow for level boarding of the new S700 cars. Just after Hawthorne and 5th, notice how the tracks curve off to the left to allow for an increase in the radius of the turn onto Elizabeth Avenue. Between this station and the next one at CPCC Central Campus is the longest gap between stations at just under 4 tenths of a mile or 600 meters. You can see how the track slab is in excellent shape as these tracks are only about 7 years old.
At the Central Piedmont Community College Central Campus Station, we see clearly how the old platform was replaced with a new, higher one. As we pass under the I-277 Beltway that encircles Uptown, Elizabeth Street becomes Trade Street. Charlotte is a fairly modern city, even by American standards. In 1920, the city only had a population of 46,000 people, making it the second largest city in North Carolina behind Winston-Salem, which only had a population of 48,000. Today, Charlotte has almost 900,000 people, and it has become the second largest financial city in the U.S. behind New York City, although their rail transit system obviously isn't even in the same league. Phase two of the CityLink's gold line cost $150 million, with half of the cost being covered by the city and the other half being covered by a New Starts grant from the Federal Transit Administration. Construction on the extension began in 2017, and it was scheduled to open in late 2020. However, the opening has been delayed by almost a year for various reasons. Service on phase one of the gold line was suspended on June 3rd, 2019, so that phase two could be completed. This was because the original platforms built in phase one had to be raised to meet the floor height of the new Siemens cars. Also, the electrification voltage had to be raised from 650 volts to the standard 750 volts. As we cross Caldwell Street, you can see the interchange track coming off from the right. Later in this video, we'll get to look at this track which loops around the Spectrum Center Arena to connect with the blue line. And speaking of the arena, here is the former terminus of Phase 1, known as CTC Arena, reflecting its location adjacent to the main bus terminal. The Charlotte Transportation Center is a huge covered bus station that opened in 1995. While it may not be the most pedestrian-friendly station, I can certainly think of a couple other central bus stations in this country that are far less appealing. Back on the tour, notice how the catenary wires terminate at the Blue Line tracks. Throughout Uptown, Gold Line cars will operate on battery power, which simplified construction of the line, as well as provided a less cluttered streetscape. Just west of Tryon Street is the only station in the unelectrified downtown section. Even though we passed the most built up section of the city, Uptown extends all the way to Interstate 77. Just before Mint Street, the catenary wires return. I would imagine the operators will raise and lower the car's panographs while stopped at the stations at CTC Arena and Mint Street. As we cross Graham Street, take a look off to the left. This is the location of the future Charlotte Gateway Intermodal Station. This station will eventually serve Amtrak, inner city buses, the Silver Line, and the proposed Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor. As you can see, construction of the two new dedicated passenger track bridges and island platform have been completed, and the first level of the station is being built. A third phase of the project remains unfunded, but a larger station building will be constructed above the platform level. This new intermodal station will replace the existing Amtrak station north of Uptown. The existing station was built by the Southern Railroad in 1962, and it is located a mile and a half away from downtown in a fairly industrial and not so pedestrian friendly part of the city. While the existing station is awesome in my opinion, it isn't able to provide the same level of interconnected service that the new Gateway station will provide. Back on the Gold Line tracks, we see the Gold Line station that will service the Gateway station. These bridges we're passing under are the new passenger tracks, followed by the existing three-track Norfolk Southern Main Line. Ahead is the Johnson & Wales Station, which is named for the Johnson & Wales University campus that surrounds the station. Thank you. 
As you see here, this footage was shot in late April 2021 and construction was still being finalized on the line. As we pass under Interstate 77, we're officially leaving Uptown Charlotte. Like almost all urban interstates, the highway creates a significant barrier to growth and you can see a distinct transition once we cross the Beltway. It's unlikely that the CATS light rail system will convince the majority of charlatans to abandon their cars, but the construction of the Blue Line has spurred a lot of transit-oriented development along its north-south corridor. It's likely that more Todd will be built along the Gold Line right-of-way as Charlotte is still a rapidly growing city. West of Uptown, Trade Street will become a two-lane road, meaning that car traffic will have to wait on Gold Line trains while they stop at the stations. This is usually done on streetcar lines to slow traffic and create more pedestrian-friendly streets, as well as encourage transit ridership. Rest assured though, Charlotte still has many car-friendly arterials that aren't going anywhere. I must compliment the city though, this streetscape is very nice looking and human-scaled. Here at 5th Street, we can see the last bit of construction that has since wrapped up. Finally, as we approach French Street, we reach the end of the Phase 2 extension of the CityLink's Gold Line. Just north of the station, we can see another pocket track like we saw at Sunnyside Avenue that will be used for swapping operating ends. The tracks will eventually continue northwest when Phase 3 of the line is built. Fortunately, whenever that happens, however, service on Phases 1 and 2 won't have to be suspended again. Now let's take a look at that interchange track that connects the Blue Line and Gold Line. Here we are driving southeast on 5th Street. As we cross the Blue Line at grade, remember that just a block west of here, we crossed under the Blue Line CTC Arena station. 5th Street was rerouted to allow construction of the Spectrum Center, which opened in 2005. You can see the interchange track off to the left. Here the track turns at Caldwell Street to continue towards Trade Street. At Trade Street, there's a switch to allow trains to access both Gold Line tracks. I believe the six cars that will serve the Gold Line are stored at the North Brevard Maintenance Facility, which is the smaller of the two maintenance facilities on the CATS system. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of this yard north of Uptown, but I did get a little footage of the larger maintenance facility south of Uptown. And as it's nice to sometimes show footage of actual trains in real construction videos, let's go take a look at that. Here we are above the Blue Line tracks, looking northeast at Uptown Charlotte. As we turn to the west, we can see several Siemens S70 cars which are used on the Blue Line. You can see the three replica streetcars built by the Gomaco Trolley Company in Ida Grove, Iowa, which were delivered in 2004. These cars briefly ran as part of the Charlotte Trolley Scheme, which operated on tracks now used by the Blue Line through Uptown. When Phase 1 of the Gold Line opened in 2015, they were used to operate that line. It's unclear what the future holds for these cars. If you have any insight, please let me know in the comments. To finish up this tour, we'll swing around the north end of the shops and take a look at more S70s. So thanks a lot for watching this update. While Charlotte's light rail system is small, the Blue Line is one of the best in the country. 
Even though the Gold Line is a streetcar line operating in mixed traffic, I'm sure it will be equally successful. Cats has a lot of plans in the works, so like I said, expect videos in the future about the Gold Line Phase 3 and the future Silver Line. If you'd like to see those, or if you'd like to see more transit construction videos, I would really appreciate you subscribing. I'm about to take another trip to the West Coast, so you can expect to see a ton of videos about the California High Speed Rail, various transit projects in Los Angeles and San Francisco, and many more. If you want to follow me on social media or Patreon, the links will be in the description, and as always, I will see you all soon.